What's up everyone? This is Jake here. We got the fourth episode of how to code your own stock trading bot. And in this episode, I wanted to talk about what makes a strategy good. What makes an algorithm good? What makes, you know, a trading strategy good? And I wanted to talk about a lot of pitfalls that people come across when they're building their own strategies and how to get over them. So when you're building, you know, in our, in our series, we've built a simple moving average crossover strategy. And we've seen, you know, profitable results from back testing, right? And I just want you to know that doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean nothing that it's profitable uh, back tested in, you know, with historical data. It doesn't mean anything because, you know, it's not in real time. And that's what really counts. So today I wanted to talk about, you know, couple things that make a strategy good. Okay. The, the biggest thing with um, trading strategies that, you know, programmers and algorithmic traders come across is, is what's called curve fitting. Okay. Or over overfitting your strategy to a set amount of data, right? You might back test, say the last, uh, say three months, say from January till, till now to March. And your strategy is wildly profitable. You're making it, you know, you're making thousands of dollars you think you got the the golden nugget and then the next day you run it and you lose a crap ton of money and you're like wow why did that happen you know my my back tested strategy was so good i made ten thousand dollars from january to to march 10th and then march 11th you run it and you lose two thousand dollars and you're like wow that sucks so you really need to you know have a plan when you're building a strategy and part of that plan is testing your algorithm with in sample data and out of sample data. Okay. So instead of, um, you know, back testing your strategy uh, for a set amount of time and then just going right into real time, which you should do anyways, for sure. Absolutely. But you need to test your strategy with in sample data. So maybe instead of January to March, you just do all of January, right? you optimize it for January, and then you test it with February and see where you get, and then maybe March is real time, okay? That is the number one key to making a good strategy is it should be able to run um, both well in in-sample data and out-of-sample data, okay? So in-sample data would be, you know, what you're back testing with, right? So say January is your in-sample data. Out-of-sample data would say, be February where it's not optimized for February, it's just running and you want to see the results. Okay. Um, I have a little example here on the screen. Um, this is the Wikipedia page for curve fitting. Okay. And I think I have it. Here we go. So this, this isn't stock, uh, you know, this isn't stock charts, but this is just a really good example of what it means to curve fit. Basically, you know, we have um, some data points here and then we're modifying the curve to fit it. And that's the same thing with backtesting algorithms. You have your, 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 your candlesticks, your, your stock market candlesticks, and then you're optimizing your strategy so well, so much, too much, that it's really good with that sample data and it makes a lot of money. But as soon as that, you know, data changes with, with new real time data, it fails. So that's the biggest pitfall for bad algorithms is over optimization and basically curve fitting with your, your um, set of data. So to summarize, all right, your trading strategy should run well with in sample data. So say a tep set time frame where you're optimized for that time frame, right? And then it should run well with new data that hasn't been optimized. It should still be profitable. Okay. So here's an example with uh, the Ninja Trader platform. Um, we've been building a simple moving average um, crossover strategy in Ninja Trader. And uh, on the screen, you should be able to see it. What I ran is an optimization from January 1st to yesterday march 9th okay and you can see yes it, it you know theoretically made um just about three thousand dollars okay cool but that doesn't mean anything 
this is an example of overfitting, right? You know, we've back tested the strategy, you know, and over optimize it for a set amount of time, but we don't know how well it's going to do in real time, right? We could run it for today, which is March 10th, 2020. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Um, so what we should be doing, let's optimize it for just January. Okay. So we're going to optimize it on max net profit just for January. Okay. So this was the best possible scenario in all of the simulations, $1,400 profit. Okay. So we've optimized it for January 2020. Let's now run that same strategy without changing it for February. So what you need to do, um, just right click and hit open in strategy analyzer tab. So this is the same strategy with the same parameters. Okay. But now uh, under the time frame section, we're going to run it from February 1st. to yeah february i guess 28th would be the last day the last trading day all right so we're going to run it you can see it, it loses money it doesn't do as well okay so this is that just proves my point that over optimizing can cause um you to do worse right and especially rushing it into with real-time money can cause you to lose money and basically you know pay your tuition of, of learning that so when you're testing your strategy, okay, what I recommend, find an idea, okay, and make sure the idea has some type of merit, you know, don't just say, oh, buy on the fifth candle and sell on the 10th candle, like there should be a reason for your trading idea. Once you have that idea, try and run it for a long amount of time, like I would recommend at least, you know, four months or more, see if it's profitable, back testing. Then... With that four months of back-tested data, try out-of-sample data. So optimize it for four months and then try running it for a new four months that it hasn't been optimized on. See how well it does. If it's profitable, then you take that in real time and you run it. Run it on a, you know, trading a low amount of capital in your account. Um, you know, say, for example, your account's $2,000. You know, I would only try risking maybe 10% or or 15% of your account. So trade with only $200 or $300 per position and run it for a week and see how it does. And then, um, you know, from there, if it's making some money, um, you can try going with it, you know, increasing the quantity slowly. If it's not making money, maybe you just need a, a really small optimization. But optimizing too much um, can cause it to fail, okay? So that's the recommended route I, I you know, the recommended route I recommend. That's that's too many of that word, but um, that's what I, I I you know would do when that's what I do when I'm building new strategies. Another thing I think a lot of people go through, and I get this a lot because I do help um, build trading bots for people, and you know um, I have some clients of mine that use my own trading systems. Overcomplicating their trading system, right? You know, adding all these very, very complex models, complex machine learning, um, you know, architectures, um, sometimes that's not needed, right? Sometimes you don't need to add, you know, a neural network to make your strategy profitable. Sometimes it might be two or three indicators or a very simple, um, you know, trading system. And people think that the more complicated you do it, the more money you're going to make, uh, which I disagree with for sure. Um, I've built some very complex models and I haven't seen really good results. And the more simpler models, I saw better results and I developed them faster. So you need to think about that um, when developing these strategies. You know, yes, could you make a very powerful trading system using neural networks? I'm sure you could. Um, 
you just have to balance how long is it going to take you to develop that strategy before you start seeing a return versus, you know, using two or three indicators um, and, and making much simpler decisions could be a profitable route for you. Okay. Um, machine learning has its place and, and definitely with finance, it, it's there, but you know, it's a, it's, it's a balance for sure. And, and like I said, complication does not equal money in uh, this sector, I feel like. So always remember that um, you don't need to make the most complex model model um, out there. And, and think about it, if, you're, if your simple strategy is making you money, you know, you can start hiring a team of, you know, people that might have more knowledge than you in machine learning and build other strategies or build one strategy, get that to make a profit. And then while that's making a profit because it is running, you know, in real time on your computer, start developing another strategy, maybe try some machine learning tactics uh, and architectures. So that's that's definitely another route to go for. But yeah, I just wanted to summarize that with the more complicated, um, the more complicating a system is, it doesn't mean it's going to make more money. So keep that in mind. Um, the last thing is something always to think about, um, you know, you need to have obviously the right system requirements, you know, you're, you're going to want to have um, ideally a dedicated VPS, a dedicated computer running somewhere off location um, that has hopefully 99% or 100% uptime running your strategies and then an easy way to override it. You know, if you want to stop it, if it's malfunctioning or you want to change some parameters on the go, that's the most ideal situation. Obviously, you could have like a separate computer running it, running your trading system 24 seven at your house. But, you know, you're more prone to power outages and internet outages, and that could cause um, you to potentially lose money. So, like I said, ideally, you want some type of, um, you know, 100% uptime VPS um, that you're paying for and that it's running. And, you know, right now, um, in 2020, they're, they're very cheap. I remember, you know, five, 10 years ago, they were pretty expensive, but the, the cost of them is going down and um, it's more affordable now because it has been uh, the supply um, has, is starting to meet the demand. So, um, yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Just, you know, how to kind of ensure that you have a successful trading system, algorithmic trading system, and really, you know, touch on some points that, that help you, um, you know, kind of confirm that before I end the episode, I do want to show you a couple links. So this article on hacker noon, Definitely check this out. Um, the title is The Ultimate Guide to Successful Algorithmic Trading. It's on hackernoon.com. I'm sure if you just Google it, you'll find it. But this is a really great article um, about someone who um, this 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 guy is an algorithmic trader and he's been doing it for, I think he said 25 years. So he definitely knows what he's talking about. Give that article a read. You'll find some great information in there. Um, and then Investopedia has a basics of algorithmic trading um, kind of guide. So check this out as well. If you're new, if you kind of are a little bit confused about algorithmic trading and want to start learning it, or at least get an understanding of it, check out this article, because this will help you out a lot when it comes to that. Um, anyways, I hope you guys, uh, found value in this video and I hope I got to teach you something. Leave a comment below on what you want the last episode to be. Um, I've gotten a lot of, lot of feedback that people want to see Python coding. People just love Python. So I might have to check that out um, and start a tutorial on a Python series with trading bots. But um, I'll be honest, I'm not very familiar with Python. I've never coded Python, so I don't know if I'm going to go with it. Um, I guess you could learn, I could do like a learn with me series. But anyways, a lot of people have been requesting about that. So um, you know, that might be a future episode or future series. So anyways, once again, hope you liked the video and we will see you in the next episode. Bye guys.